Francisco is the brand which is very high in the market. If you see here and there, the demanding technology, the demanding things. The same uh, was the case with our MPLS also. Those who are working from the last uh, 15 or 18 years, they are very well aware about the MPLS technology, that how it was, I mean, how much hype created for the MPLS also at that time. Something like 18 years back, when I just started working with the networking things. So let me introduce, uh, first of all, to Michael. So I'm your trainer, Abhishek, for this course, and I have been working in this networking in, uh, industry from the last 18 years. And I have my, uh, I'm dual CCI in your enterprise as well as in security. Apart from that, Cisco, I also have a experience in my Juniper, in Huawei, Alcatel, Nokia, Recom, and many other vendors, because I'm basically working in my service provider domain as a consultant and as a manager also with the one major leading company here in India. So we are very well aware of, uh, that the SD van is just started in this production house also. If you go and check it anywhere, major job which is going to be happening which is uh, involving the SD van conflict. Why? Because it is in initial phase. We are trying to set up, we are trying to replace over the old and legacy way of networking. Right. And we are made changing these things to the SD. But those who have audio is not clear. Okay, just one second, let me check that. Mm -hmm. Is it better now? All right, so I will not use that. No issue. Okay, that's good. So the first thing you need to know about this SD WAN, that SD WAN, which kind of a solution we are getting with this SD WAN? Is it for our LAN scenario for the WAN? So it's if the name is telling you that the WAN, SD WAN, it's basically a WAN solution for our production networks. So what kind of a thing is there? What kind of a technology we are going to use? What kind of a devices we are going to use? And why it is very much required to use SD-WAN in place of our old legacy way of uh, creating the VPN and creating the WAN connection using MPLS technology. Right? Do not worry about this. Even those who know something about it or th those who want to just learn because there is uh, so much demand in the market. Let me tell you, the same hype was created for MPLS also, something 18 years back. But nowadays, if you are aware about this, that the MPLS is the same way, even a CCM engineer can um, uh, work with that. So do not worry about this, that it is a very difficult or it's a something like the, that nobody is going to be work with these things. It's not like that. It's the same, uh, just a one technology, which is going to replace, not in a one day or in one year, Obviously, in a some time, it will be phased manner. It will be phased out over the previous one. But the reason, what is the reason behind it? Why we using it? And what is the main thing behind it? That why it is hype created about the SD WAN because of the demand in the market. What is the demand? We are not only doing a something like a, a traffic means traffic engineering or the simple data we are dealing. Nowadays, we are dealing with the different type of data, which is not possible with the help of our old way of doing a WAN connectivity between the branches. So let's see that first, what is SD-WAN? It's basically a WAN solution for our network. What is there in your SD-WAN? So if you guys are aware about our old way of doing the WAN connectivity, there are two ways through which we can have a WAN connectivity in the old way. The first way, if I is to suppose a company having a five to six branches, 
let me make these things here so you will get a better idea so suppose there is a one company having suppose a one head office hq and there are some five to six branches of that company if that company want to connect it's all the branches with the head office how it can do that this is head office and there are something four to five branches obviously they are not in the same city or maybe not in the same um, state maybe national wise in a one country so if suppose this is the case this is my one hq and there are something four to five branches those who want to connect the there are two ways to connect with that the one way hq can connect with these branches with the help of internet connection they all can get that like a normal internet connection that we get in our home if i want to connect on the internet with any web server all over the world what i need i need just an internet connection and all good i will be able to access any web server on all over the world doesn't matter what is the physical location of that server same way the companies can connect two ways to their branches to the headquarter or to branch to branch communication the one way is isp using internet connection right they have uh, internet connection all the branches in the headquarter they can communicate second way how we can provide the connectivity between uh, between these branches and the headquarter is obviously the isp but this time using mpls technology so the third option is also possible which is a private your own network right the private own network of the company which is totally uh, uh, means not possible because who will uh, uh, means which government is going to allow any private company to dig the road and lay their own cable and connect their branches even if it is allowed maybe because of some reason so how costly affair will be for a company which is dealing maybe something for a retail business are they going to maintain these cables are they going to look after that cables and all that it's not possible so the third option which is a private or the own by the company itself is not possible which is not cost effective as well as it's not a scalable way because whatever the job is company doing maybe the banking job maybe the finance related job or maybe the retail business that is the job they are not involved in something called as a networking so even if they are going to lay their cables to connect their all the branches it will be a very costly affair and to maintain that they required a huge staff strength those who understand the networking and those who also know how to maintain these cables so that first option is not possible second option is internet which is the cheapest way to connect these branches with the headquarter but there is two problem with the internet what is that true problem the first problem no privacy you have no privacy on that it's a basically a public network it's basically your public network nothing there will be a privacy kind of thing. second no quality of service you are never going to get quality of service in this case of your internet means quality of service and one more thing no fix the speed there are three problem when you are connecting your branches with the headquarter by the internet the first thing there is no privacy it is on public network so anyone those who are on the internet any hacker can get your packet it depends on what they can do with that uh, data we'll see that also but yeah it's on public so no one means it's not secure your data is not secure second thing no quality of service you cannot guarantee something like a, what kind of a packet loss you are going to get what kind of uh, priority you want to give your traffic and all that something is not possible here on the internet like suppose in the case of voip if you want that if the branches are involved with the voice traffic that traffic should given with the highest priority which is not possible over in internet because quality of service something which you can configure in your private network not on the internet internet is going to take all the traffic by default as it is a normal traffic they will not going to give any uh vip treatment to any kind of a traffic on the internet because if it is the case 
what will happen all over the world everyone will try to give the quality of service to their traffic so that is the reason that internet is never going to give any quality of service to any service provider or to any company or to the any enterprise no way same way multicasting is also not supported on our internet so multicasting quality of service big no on a internet it's not possible no way so the third problem the fixed speed the speed you are going to get on the internet it depends on the availability of the bandwidth how much congestion or the traffic is there on the internet or on the public network so if you are going to take a normal internet connection even for your home what term you will get there something like this up to 100 mbps up to 200 mbps it means they are not giving you guarantee that you will get 100 mbps speed they are giving the guarantee that you may get at uh, any time of a, uh, in at any time of the day something like 100 mbps when there is a no traffic or the less traffic so up to is very dangerous thing which is a marketing or the um, sales kind of a things where you are selling your product as a 100 mbps plan but basically if you check the detail you will see that there is a word up to means your speed may go max to max 100 how much you will get it depends on the traffic and the load on the internet all that so these are the three problem if you are connecting your branches with the head office by using internet then you are going to struggle with this thing the speed there will be a packet loss when there is a congestion on the internet there is a no quality of service you cannot uh, try means you cannot give any priority to your uh, vip traffic the data or any video no nothing is allowed third thing security there is no security of your data because it's going on the public network so these are the problem on internet but still you can connect if you want if you are going to address these things you are going to tolerate these all things still you can connect your branches with the headquarter using internet connection all right the third option first option was the private which is not scalable not cost effective the third option till now we had was mpls what is there in the mpls it's a private network it's a private network where i'm where my traffic from the branches and between the headquarters is never going on the public network on the internet no way so you're it's basically a virtual private network when you are connecting your all the branches with the headquarter it's basically a virtual private network isp is connecting your all the branches to the headquarter and they are doing all this stuff which is required to run your MPLS kind of a thing. Here you can get a, some quality of service things. Because you can ask that I want to be because it's your own private network. So you can plan accordingly that what kind of a quality of service is required, which kind of traffic you want. But for that, you have to ask to the ISP. The quality of service is depend with the help of your ISP. You need to take the plan maybe the gold the silver kind of a plan you have to take from the isp and isp is going to give you that quality of service based on your plan based on the sl that kind of agreement you are making with the client isp and clients are making which is called as a sl there you can demand about the quality of service <clears throat> so the third thing the speed Speed you also going to get the fixed speed. Whatever the speed you are going to ask, maybe suppose you are asking for the 100 Mbps plan. So it will be always 24 by 7, no matter how much congestion your ISP is uh, there, but your speed will never go below that. It will be always 100 Mbps. So these all things is possible in case of your MPLS, the quality of service, the fixed speed, the privacy, <clears throat> And scalability in the sense, you are getting the scalability here also, but in the sense, like suppose if you want to add a new one new branch, so you can add it without making any changes on your previous branches or your headquarter. It's not required any changes on your headquarter or the branches. Once you add a new branch, you need to only work on that new branch and that will be added to and we will be able to communicate with that all branches. So till now, we are working with this concept. 
first one which is not possible the private own network second one is the internet some small companies obviously they are going to work on this way they are not going to invest a lot, lot of money on that mpls the big companies to the medium sized companies are going to use mpls network till now there is a one problem in mpls if i say from the cost point of view the cost is very high cost is very high in the case of your internet in this mpls network suppose you are taking a 100 mbps mpls link that will cost you something 10 to 100 time more than that of your internet connection how much 10 to 100 time so in in some cases maybe just a 10 time in some cases it will be something like a 100 times than your normal internet connection that is the problem with your mpls so obviously a small company is never going to see about this things mpls kind of thing mpls something like a bank if i say in a real scenario if i talk about that like a bank having uh, something 300 or the 400 branches all over the country so obviously they will use this mpls app or any other uh, company those who having a 100 branches they want to connect them to have a better communication on the private network with the fixed speed they can also go for it because the cost is very high second thing about the mpls what is the problem the second problem is configuration bar means scalability when suppose you want to make a new mpls network for a company how much how much time is going to take suppose there are train branches may take a two to three days to make that operational two to three days to make that operational if there are many branches like 300 and all that it will take a maybe 10 days 15 days it depends on that the number of uh, branches and the head office you have so the problem with this the configuration is all manual obviously when there is a manual configuration involved you uh, you may create a problem you may give us some mistake or you can create any problem in your configuration that will also take us some more time to resolve that and to find out the reason behind so the configuration part is a uh, totally manual and it's going to take a lot of time in today's scenario if any company want to make a network private net net network so they are not going to wait something like that 100 days just for the mpls network configuration for each and every device so that's a big problem in this the configuration part is going to take a lot of time that is also a big factor in this mpls so it is a manual as well as it's going to take a lot of time any error or any problem is there in your configuration you have to manually check it again from the scratch to the full length so that problem is there third thing the kind of a configuration involved with your mpls is something like this you need to uh, implement your ospf in your isp side that is your underlay things you need to configure your mpls protocol on that after that you need to configure bgp on that after that you need to configure your vr of things for each and every customer these four things will be configured for any private company if they want to shift on mpls technology any part is missing any mistake is there in your igp in your mpls in your bgp in your vrf that's never going to work a lot of time most of the time you will see that engineers those who are involved with this thing they are troubleshooting the problem because all is manual everything you are doing through the cli whatever configuration we are doing with the help of cli so this is the things which is right now happening with the mpls it's a good thing the quality of service is there the speed is there the private network is there but the problem is this the first thing it's a very costly affair second thing the configuration part is very time taking third part different protocols are involved if a single mistake in a one protocol is going to affect your whole mpls net network if my suppose ospf is down some part my mpls is wrong my bgp is wrong my vrf is wrong that's never going to make your circuit app and all the branches with the head office so that is the problem with our mpls network basically it's a manual time taking things 
which is going to take a lot of time and very costly also. So what the new solution come up, the new solution for the WAN connectivity, we have come up with the SD-WAN. The industry come up with the new solution and always remember that the LG wire is not something about Cisco only. Every company, every vendor thinks those who are running in this net networking, they are making their own SD WAN. Doesn't matter whether it is a Cisco, Huawei, Alcatel, Palo Alto, they all are making this SD WAN device. So SD WAN name is not something <clears throat> which is related with your Cisco. It's a common word which is used for the WAN solution which is going to provide you the WAN connectivity in today's scenario. So it is not something which is, never think that that SD-WAN is something for the Cisco only. Now, what SD-WAN is going to provide? Whatever the facility we were getting in our MPLS, the same thing we are going to get in the SD-WAN also. When I want to connect my branches with the head office, I'm going to get <clears throat> security, I'm going to get my quality of service. I'm going to get my somehow not the that much of MPL at the fixed speed, but the speed will be of a good quality. Not the fixed because the fixed is only possible in case of your MPL. It's not possible in your SD WAN scenario. So these three things we are getting same like our MPL. What is the better thing in your SD WAN? The first thing, cost is less as compared to your MPLS. Reason we'll see that. Second thing, now the configuration is in MPLS in the in your SD WAN is automated and GUI based. Not something we are going to use CLI in our SD WAN. And adding a new branch or a new device with any specific location, it's also very easy. So you can see that a zero touch deployment option is there. <laughs> we have zero touch deployment because there is the automated things, there is UI based access. So the thing we are getting here is the time will be very less to configure it. Less time to configure it. To configure or make ready my all the network based on the SD band technology. Within a day, the thing we were doing in our MPLS may be something taking a one month, something like a 20 days. The same thing you can then with the help of your SD band in a day. It's not required many engineers also. It requires just a few network engineers and all things can be done from a one point from controller that's also making a fantastic thing like in the case of mpls the engineers those who are working in the mpls they need to visit that site physically they need to connect them and configure each and everything manually there on that site physically then only they will be able to make that kind of a thing Otherwise, it's not going to work. But in the case of SD WAN, my SD WAN devices, basically a router, we can configure it, deploy that on the site, and it, it can be configured from the one point, from the central point. Maybe it, it is on the headquarter or some other branch. From there, one point you can configure. So the time is very less, the cost is very less, and all the thing of my MPLS I am also getting in my SD WAN. Security, quality of service, and speed is also good. That is the reason the whole world is crazy about this SD WAN and shifting their way. But there is a one drawback still. The security, because this SD WAN that we are using, there is a big confusion with the student or those who are working in this field, even those who are configuring these things. There is a one big, big confusion. Let me clear that first. What is that confusion in this? Yeah, if you have any question, you can ask in the chat box. The confusion is, most of the time, a student and the engineer think that this SD WAN is only going to provide us on the internet. We are going to connect my SD WAN devices only on the internet. 
that's a totally wrong that's a wrong concept if you're thinking that i'm going to use my sd wan for my just uh, on a internet network to connect my branches with the head office like that scenario it's a totally wrong concept So SD WAN devices are a WAN solution. It's up to you what media, what kind of a network you want to connect. Suppose I'm using these SD WAN devices here on the branches. Here, here, and all the branches are using. And here is my the main controller is there in the HQ. So this media that I'm using here, ISP, it might be my internet as well as it might be your MPLS network. Yes, that is correct. You can use your SD-WAN on MPLS network also. There is no problem because this, whatever the network you are using, the media you are using, it can be anything. It can be the internet, it can be the MPLS, it can be any other, like your 4G, 5G network, doesn't matter. So MPLS is not something, something which is going to work only on your internet network. No. Yeah, the use case is this. Most of the time, we are going to use our SD-WAN on internet network. Why? Because it's cost effective. It's a configuration is automated and a very less kind of uh, changes I required on my branch side. Just a one device, which is configured from the centrally from a one point automated by the UI option. That is the reason why we use internet as the media to connecting my branches to the headquarter by the SD WAN. But never believe that the SD WAN is only the case. You will see that only on the internet. No, in in my company, if I say that we are using this SD WAN, means the companies are using SD WAN for uh, on MPLS network also. So yeah, SD WAN is not something which is going to work only on the internet. It can be your any kind of a network. Maybe the MPLS, maybe the 4G, 5G. Doesn't matter. The thing we are going to get in this is this is giving you the all feature of my MPLS as well as some extra advantage of the cost and the time. Next thing, what we are going to get in this SD WAN. The big, biggest advantage for the SD WAN is that we are getting a visibility, which is not possible in the case of MPLS. Once you configure that, your branch is working perfectly well. You cannot monitor it from uh, any point, any particular branch or the head, head office that everything is going well. How much traffic is going there? What kind of a traffic is going? Is there any packet drop or not? Nothing you can watch on your MPLS network. But on SD-WAN, it's a based on the controller based kind of a setup. You have the GUI access. So it's provide us a visibility, a big, big advantage for any uh, enterprise. If there is a visibility in your network, you can have what you can see about the quality of service parameters. You can see the security kind of a thing. You can plan accordingly that which kind of a data is going uh, flowing on between my branches and between the headquarter. And I need to give the priority to that data, that data type. So if there is a visibility, that's making it as a better way to manage that, right? From the management point of view, you are getting an extra advantage to manage your network, to manage your data, to manage your traffic, how to deal with that. So that visibility for your traffic, for your devices is possible only in the case of SD-1, which is not possible in your MPLS kind of a legacy network. So that's provided visibility also. Obviously, there is a security inbuilt in your SD-1 devices. So it's a equal to your MPLS, but we'll never say that MPLS and sd WAN security is the equal or the same. No way. Because ultimately your sd WAN traffic, if you are going to connect with the help of internet, it is, it is going on the public network. So any data which is going on the internet, you never know what anyone can do with that, depending on the uh, knowledge and the expert level of that hacker. They may de decrypt it, they may check it properly, they can check the pattern and all the things. So obviously, you can never claim that on internet, SD-WAN data is 100% secure. No way. Which is only possible in the case of MPLS, where ISP is not mixing your data with any other customer, or it is not mixing your data on internet. It's a private. So what companies are planning nowadays? Let me show you. What company means any enterprise is doing right now? They are taking a 
two type of a connection still they have their mpls network still they have their mpls network but yeah earlier suppose they were using a mpls network of uh, 100 mbps now because of your sd wan they reduce that speed to the 10 mbps something like, like that why because it's still some server which is very confidential for your company you still want to keep in your company inside your premises you don't want to shift it on the cloud right so what is the companies are doing any bank or any financial or any company whatever the secure data they have for that whatever the server they are using they are still connecting for that data from the head office this is suppose data center of that HD. all the branches if though they want to connect to this highly secure server they will still use that mpls network as per the policy of the company as per the policy of the security advisor that you need to still use that secure mpls network connection for it but for the rest most of the part of any company all the servers they have shifted where they have shifted their servers on the cloud right on the internet cloud means on internet there are many cloud companies like your azure aws dropbox and all that but yeah these are the major three azure aws and your dropbox so suppose this is your cloud what companies are now doing and obviously they need to do it if suppose this is a bank what is the job of bank it, its job is to do the financial things right it's not it's, it's job not to maintain the server and have expertise to those who are looking in the servers provide a connectivity and maintaining with the help of network engineer all that so this is not their primary business their primary business to do the banking with the customers so what the companies are doing they are shifting their all the server on the cloud and cloud connectivity is only possible how with the help of internet cloud is on your internet so anyhow when you are shifting your server from your head office from the data center to the cloud that connectivity will be only with the help of internet so that is the reason why mpls is not a good decision when companies shifting their data center to the cloud once it is shifted there on the cloud no company is going to use mpls net network very costly network for that the reason because ultimately if my branches if they are going via the mpls to the headquarter and headquarter is redirecting them to the cloud so still it is going on the internet so if your data ultimately going on the internet then there is a means useless case of sending the data from the branch to the mpls then from the mpls to the headquarter and then headquarter is sending back to the cloud on the internet so that is the reason why the companies are shifting from mpls to the sd wan because their data is shifted or they, or yeah, their server shifted on the cloud which is on the internet so if ultimately my branches in the headquarter are going to connect to the cloud on the internet why they need the mpls obviously they don't need but the reason is still the companies are having the hosting some very secure data on their own site on their premises they're not shifting it whole things on the cloud because once a thing is on internet on the public cloud you never know what can be done with that data so that is the scenario right now working in all over the world what is that there are two type of connects for the band connects we are using still the mpls so MPLS is not going to be replaced by your SD WAN. One confusion it should not be there in your mind. MPLS is not going to replace your means MPLS is not going to be replaced by your SD WAN. MPLS will be also there. MPLS at the same time SD WAN they are you. SD WAN anything which is on the cloud. Whenever the branches want to communicate on the internet, they will use SD WAN connection. But but still for the privacy for the very secure connection they still use MPLS. The only thing we are getting earlier suppose there was a speed of 100 mbps now the companies are reducing it to the 10 mbps. but still they are using maybe in future once my sd van become a very secure we may shift totally on our sd van totally fully we can shift it on so now what the branches are doing are they maintaining two routers one is for the mpls and one is for the sd van no so what they are doing all the branches and headquarters they are using only that sd wan edge routers as vs devices so only one device one vs device is 
going to provide you both connects with the internet where your customer from that branch can go over the internet and one end interface will go toward your MPLS in the old way. So that's possible. So never confuse with that. That SD-WAN is going to totally replace my MPLS net network. Or if I'm using SD-WAN, I have to maintain two devices. One is my for MPLS, one is for my SD-WAN. No, SD-WAN itself or one device can have a one connection toward your MPLS net network for the privacy and one connection toward the internet. So interesting thing is here, what you get, that MPLS is still there. MPLS is your underlay network on which you can run your SD-WAN kind of a overlay connection. Doesn't matter what kind of a underlay technology I'm using for my SD-WAN. It might be my simple internet, IP network, or it might be the MPLS, it might be the 4G, 5G, doesn't matter. What underlay technology I'm going to use, it's giving the flexibility. SD-WAN is giving you the flexibility. There is no such problem. You can use anything. So that is why all over the world companies are using both type of things. On a VHS devices, they are sending over some traffic over the MPLS, some, some traffic on the internet. And why this is, so what is the reason behind why SD-WAN is there? Because of this cloud. Because the companies are shifting their servers on the cloud. Cloud means on the internet. So if I want to access my internet with the help of MPLS, it's a useless case. It's a very costly affair. So that's why there is SD-WAN technology, which is separating these two types of a traffic. If anything is very, very private, private or the secure, you will may still go through the MPLS. And all the rest traffic, you can go with the help of internet. So that flexibility and security you are getting with the help of SD-WAN. Right? Till now, if you guys have any question, you can ask. Otherwise, we are good to go ahead. So see that my job is not, or any mentor's job is not to give you any complicated kind of a thing. My job is not to make the things complicated for you guys or for any student. My job is to just explain a thing in such a way that you can straight forward get that. Correlate with that, whatever the job you are doing there, you can correlate with that. Then only go and deep dive into that and try to understand what is that SD-WAN. So this is the basic idea of your SD-WAN. If you guys have any questions, you can ask. What we are getting this in SD-WAN? Why we are shifting toward the SD-WAN? What things we are going to get in that SD-WAN? Obviously, the devices, the technology, the configuration, all that you will learn. But the first basic idea is this, that you need to understand first. Nothing, then no problem. Let's go ahead and see that. Because this SD-WAN, because your uh, software-defined networking, right? It's basically based on the software. Whatever things we are doing in the MPLS, it's all my CLI-based configuration, which is very, very, I mean, it's not as scalable in a such scenario. In today's complicated network, it's not possible to design and configuring all the things with the help of SD, uh, with the help of MPLS or the CLI way. Even those who are aware about the security kind of a thing, the firewalls, those who know about it, like your next generation firewall, next gen firewall, they are only there is a one option to manage them, the GUI. Because a lot of, lot of things is involved. It's not possible to manage your firewall by the CLI. No way. Same way for your SD-WAN devices. We are shifting toward the automation. We are doing all the things by the GUI. Obviously, the GUI means the controller is going to fire the command in a human readable form but once it is going to your device it will be in a command format in any structural language like your yang model maybe your rest conf the nest conf that all things will be there right so it's basically reduce the time that we require to configure or set up any new technology or the new network when network for any company and at the same time very cost effective at the same time the time which required to configure will be also very low and providing a full visibility at the same time to monitor and to effectively manage your traffic wherever you want to do it. So what is there in your SD-WAN? 
according to the Cisco, there are two type of event solution they are providing. One is your Victoria based and one is your hardcore from the Cisco, which is Cisco Mirac. These are the two type of services right now Cisco are providing to their customers, to their clients, those who want to shift their WAN connectivity or the WAN network on the SD WAN. All right. So as you can see here also, the zero touch deployment is there, the cloud manager is there, the dynamic path selection is there. Because see, if there is a visibility about your whole WAN network, so you can plan accordingly that how you are going to manage it. In any software based, I mean software defined networking, what is the most important thing is this. If I go here, there will be always a controller for all the routers, switches and all that. The controller is taking the control plane from my all the routers and switches. They're not doing that control kind of a thing. Control plane is totally taken uh, away from my routers and switches to the controller. This controller is going to control them and how their control traffic will flow that will be decided by the controller. So that's why the controller having the full visibility, what kind of a traffic is flowing. They are only maintaining data plane. They are only responsible. My devices, those who are connecting to the cloud, they are only responsible to forward the traffic from, from one interface to another with the help of, with the instruction from the controller. That's why these are very popular nowadays. And obviously, it's going to make the job easy for a net network engineer. Uh, there are some engineers in the market, those who think that they know how to configure MPLS, uh, BGP, VPN. They think they are very small. So from now onward, once my software defined network will be there in the market, it's no worry. You don't have to remember the command that how many commands are required to make a MPLS, BGP, VPN. Something 50 commands. 30 commands, 80 commands, not required now. All will be in a UI base. Like you work on your window devices, click here and there. You can configure a file. You can um, write down something in the file, right? Same way you can, you are going to work with your software defined networking also, where all things will be based on the UI. Those who having the experience working with the next generation firewall, they're very much aware that we are not configuring. See, suppose if you are configuring a simple IPC, Maybe those who are aware about how to configure IPsec channel on router. How many commands are required? There are two phases to require to be configured. There will be a crypto map. Need to apply that crypto map. We need to set the parameter. And even a single mistake in that 20 line or the 25 line configuration of your IPsec, your IPsec channel will never come up. Right? How hectic and manual thing is that? And time taking. That all will be go with the help of our software defined network. I don't need to remember these commands. I need, I, uh, I don't need to worry about these things. I need to only worry now about my concept, about the IPsec. What we are going to do with my IPsec things. What kind of a phase one, phase one, uh, phase one and phase two tunnels are established? What kind of a parameter is there? Like what is my group? What is my encryption technology? All that you need to require to understand. And that is the re reality. Why should I know in which way I need to type the command? In Cisco, there is a some other way. If you are working with the Juniper, it is some other commands. If you are working with the Huawei, you are going to use a, you are going to type a some other command. On Alcatel, you are going to type a some different command. So this is not required for any network engineer. We are the means a human being is not a kind of a something, a, um, a storage device where you can store all the things. Those who are working with the Cisco, they know how to configure the IPC. Those who are working with the Juniper, they know how to configure it. But if your concept is good, if you are understanding about that, any particular topic is good. It will not take a lot of time to understand that how to configure here or how to configure there. So based on these things, now in the case of SD-WAN, or any software defined networking, we are totally replacing that. Dependency on the command for this vendor and that vendor is totally removed now. So those who want to become the network engineer, always remember one thing in your mind. Command is not going to make you engineer. The concept and the understanding about that protocol is going to make you a real engineer. So obviously once everything will be shifted on that, 
you don't need to type any command you don't don't need to worry about that how to configure bgp router bgp as number and all that you only need to know what is the meaning of as number there what is the meaning of net network command there what is the meaning of root reference to client means all the concepts you require to know now how to drive that which is totally not required in your sd1 so it's a good thing those who are worried about that maybe the software network is going to replace the network engineers it's not going to replace your way of configuring or the way of uh, looking to the network will totally change you will not be replaced if you are able to know the concept or you already know about the concept yeah those who only depend on the commands they will be replaced totally because it's not that uh, knowledge or it's not a kind of a concept that is required to learn the command how to configure the jari tunnel how to configure the vpn it's totally useless case even if you go and google it you will get the command right the only interesting part is the concept behind each and every command if i'm writing the word router if i can type router bgp or a number something like this so you need to understand what is this number what is this bgp protocol where to use it where to not use the bgp protocol that is required not this command that how to configure it on the cisco device yeah this is the way how we configure it on the cisco devices this command on our cisco devices so be careful about this need to understand the concept not about that things now in sd wan solution what we have as i told you it is totally based on your software defined networking where all the things will be automated all devices will be managed by your controller from the one point and you have the full visibility about it and all that if i go in deeper in that sd wan things there are two ways by which cisco is providing a solution for the wan networking in that if i go for this thing basically the controller which i was talking about that in the sd wan we have a controller these are uh, this is the most important part of your controller v manage v manage is going to be supported by your v bond and v smart v smart these three is basically making your a one full controller compact controller you will manage your means you will access your v manage once your v bond and v smart is attached with the v manage they are able to communicate then by accessing the v manage you can configure deploy changes whatever you want to do you can do with your edge devices v edge devices means simply router whatever the device you are using right now that devices can be upgraded to the sd wan network also what i need to do i need to just upgrade my software my ios which is there on my routers so some router can be upgraded to the sd wan on the v edges devices but some router not supporting that so you have to replace that once you are having that things it all they all can be controlled from the one central point from the controller controller is basically having a three part we have the v bond v smart and the v manage v manage is the main part which is providing you the human interaction where you are going to interact with the controller any human being is going to interact with the v manage and then you are going to control your edge devices with the help of v manage so all will be based on the gui if my lab is okay i will definitely show you if i will be able to take the control of it So let me open that. We'll see about it also. So in your SD WAN solution, in your Cisco based, web tailor based, we are talking right now. So here, V bond, V smart, and the V manage is making your control bar. Now, doesn't matter which underlay technology you are using, MPLS, internet, 4G, 5G, doesn't matter. The only required thing is have a connectivity from the controller to your S devices. These S devices are not. any computer kind of a device these are the simply routers which are upgraded on that right so we'll take a just a two minute short break and then we'll see about in detail in depth of that about this your sd wan things okay just take a two minute break
right? All right, uh, we are all good to go. I got a one question from there, which is difference between SD WAN and the cloud technology. That's great. Let's see that. SD WAN is providing you, means it's a WAN technology, how you are going to connect your devices on a long distance terms between your branches to the headquarter, which technology you are going to use. Cloud is something where you are going to have your servers, where you are going to host your servers. So don't confuse that cloud and the SD WAN is somehow connected. No, the thing is, the thing is, cloud is totally different. We are shifting our resources, our servers, and all that on the cloud that can be managed from my branches and from the headquarter. 24 by 7 on the internet. So cloud is not a technology, a van technology. Cloud is facility, which is a service. You are provided by the cloud hosting companies like the AWS and Azure. They are providing you this kind of a thing that you can install their server. You can have different kind of a features. You can have a different kind of a services from there and all that. SD-WAN is a solution to provide connectivity between your branches to uh, and your uh, head office. It has totally different thing, right? So SD WAN can be used to connect with the cloud also. SD WAN device can be used to connect with the cloud where you have the servers securely. So cloud is something where you are hosting your servers, your um, infrastructure there on that. And the SD WAN is a way how to connect on that cloud with that servers and all that of the company. So there are a lot of confusion like this way with the student's mind. So, but my job is to explain in a such a way, even if you are totally new in this world, you will be able to understand SD-WAN in a proper way, step by step. Now, 
in your controller SD WAN, we have a basically three main parts: V manage, V bond, and V small. V manage is the main point which is going to provide a connectivity user interface with the human being. Human being can connect with that V manage and manage all the SD WAN network, all the infrastructure with that. V bond and V smart is going to do what? Let's see that V bond is what? It's basically providing a management between the control and data player. The name itself telling you it's a bond means it's providing a bonding for the management as well as for the data plane. For the all your management control and data plane is providing a connectivity between that. It's a first point when you are connecting any new device. That is the first thing which is going to provide you the means it's going to ask you for the authentication. And it will be it depends on you are requires public IP address if it is on the internet, if it is on the MPLS, it may work on the private IP address also. So the VBond, which is providing a connectivity, first thing in your controller. Second thing in your this is your V. Yeah. Second thing is your V manage, which is basically the main core part of your controller, which is going to manage. Manage means everything you can do it from there, from the vManage. Like these are the things. These are the things that you can use to fire the command toward your devices, like your restconf, nestconf, and the rest API is based, which, which is very popular nowadays for all the software defined networking. We are using rest APIs. So these are the technique how which your vManage is going to communicate with the human being as well as with the devices. Human being is going to connect with the vManage. The manager is going to convey the same message to the devices that, hey, I want to configure RIP, I want to configure OSPF, I want to configure BGP, all that you will do it with the help of vManage. So vManage, basically a main part which is going to handle your all the management plane. It's where you are going to manage your all the devices, including your vBond and vSmart from the vManage itself. Then we have a vSmart. VSmart is basically for the control. As I told you, in your software defined networking, I'm not talking just for the SD WAN, even for the SD access, for the LAN solution, where you are having a DNA kind of a, a very popular device from the Cisco, a controller which is going to manage your switching things in the layer two things. So that control plane from my switches and router is taken out from the device itself and shifted toward my the controller. So vSmart is that device. vSmart is that part which is controlling all these devices. Controlling means it is instructing them that how to be packet forwarded from this point to this point. How the destination IP, if it is this, it should go from this interface to that interface. That kind of all control things will be done centrally from the one point from your controller itself. So vSmart is responsible for that. vBond is for providing a proper management and connectivity between them. vManage is the main device which is going to manage and configure as well as configure all the device. Anything you want to add, delete anything will be done by that. vSmart is taking care of your control plane, which is instructing the devices how to forward a packet for a particular one packet, how it should go in a easy way. In a detailed way, obviously, once you will uh, watch for this course, you will go, but step by step. If I go and start explaining something, how the vSmart is working, how the vBond is working, it's nothing you will understand. And maybe you will feel disappointed that I, I don't go for this course. It's a bit difficult. But if you go step by step from the easy way, like a 10 year kids, those who are learning about this, they can get it properly well. So that way, we, I'm going to explain and take these classes. So we manage vBond and vSmart. These are the three main part of your controller. With the help of that, you are going to manage your the whole WAN network. What is there in the WAN network? We have the V edges router. A simple router, those are called as a V edges because my control plane is shifted from the router to my controller. That's it. Now the data plane. What the data plane is done? My devices itself, those who are my V edge devices, it may be anywhere. It may be on your, see, don't confuse. That this is my cloud device. This is my data center. No, this is there in the cloud. I'm using my these two base device. 
I am using my V as router here in the data center, here in my own campus, in my company, in my branches, in my remote branches. So these are the name of my sites where I'm using these VHS devices and they may connect with any ways. They can make connect with the help of MPLS, with the help of internet or the 4G to my controller. Do any VHS device in your SD-WAN, when you are uh, connecting anywhere in any branch or in a head office, it required a proper connectivity with the controller. If there is no connectivity, it's a useless case. That device will be not managed by the controller and you will not be able, able to monitor or control it from the central one point. So data pane is there in my VHS. The data plane means that how the data will be shifted from one interface to another interface. Their job is merely switching the packet from one interface to another interface. That's it. Not more than that. All right. Now, what kind of a protocol is used? What kind of a protocol is used? to have a proper communication between all kind of sd band devices. So one thing I want to tell you that be smart, be uh, be born and your be managed. It just uh, think it as like a controller. Controller and all the parts in inside that controller as well as the VHS. They are going to talk with the help of OMP protocol, overlay management protocol with the help of be smart. Right? They're going to talk with that protocol because vSmart is the device which is which is responsible for control plane things. How the data will flow from here to there and all things will be managed by that. So which is totally responsible for it. Overlay management protocol. Then we have, uh, see that, how it is managing. Under that OMP protocol, vSmart is going to instruct your this device. Suppose there are two devices. VH1, VH2. And then I have, uh, see, I will talk about this VPN right now. So there is a big confusion about the VPN also. It means unnecessary, they think it is very complicated things. It's not like that. So here are the, there are two VHs. I want to instruct it from the vSmart. Hey, when you are getting a packet from A, submit A to the submit C, how you will forward it? Over the transport 1 or over the transport 2? Who is managing, instructing? vSmart is going to instruct it to the VH1. Then VH is going to follow the traffic from summit A to the summit C over transport 1 or over transport 2. That is the control function. Earlier, my router itself was doing that control function. It was checking the routing table for, for uh, FIB table or your MPLS table and accordingly it was forming the packet. But now all the thing is shifted to my controller to control this. So he is guiding with the help of OMP protocol that how need to follow the traffic from summit A to the summit C or submit D. That is done by the control plane, which is your really smart in the case of SD-WAN solution. All right. Now, the interesting part, why the SD-WAN is providing you the flexibility to connect my branches with the head office on the internet itself. The reason is, it's using by default, there is a security inbuilt. IP6 security is used to any kind of a connection, whenever my VH is going to talk to each other or whenever my VHs are going to communicate with the controller, that communication will be totally secure, highly secure, you can say, by default itself. It will be by default secure. So that is why no no one is worried about that. Uh, my, sorry? Okay, I got a one question. What if all the server are deployed uh, within your data center, not cloud. So, yep, yeah, in that case, suppose your all the services, all the servers are not on the cloud. So, it's up to you. You, if your branches just want to connect with your head office and want to communicate that data servers, I don't need any SD WAN solution. I can still use my M MPLS. But see, one thing very important. It not because I am uh, we are shifting toward the cloud. That is why we are using SD WAN. See here, what other things is there? SD WAN is reducing the cost. It's the increasing the quality of service. It's providing you the security, providing you the visibility, removing the manual configuration. That is the facility we are getting. So it doesn't matter. Even we are not shifting on the cloud. Still, we there is a scope. 
to use my SD WAN devices to get these all things by just going for the internet connection to my headquarter. So that is still possible. Even if my headquarter is going to have all the servers and there are two type of server. One is normal server, which is not very secure and one are very secure server. For the very secure server, I can still use my MPLS network for my branches and for the headquarter. And for, and for the all other server, what I can do? I can say that, no, don't come with the help of MPLS link. Come through the internet link. Why? Because internet link is very cheap. You are not paying a lot of money for that. So still that SD WAN will work. So don't believe that even the any company is not shifting on the cloud. It means they there is no use case of SD WAN. SD WAN is the reason of these things using. So even if my all the servers are there in the headquarters, still I will require the SD WAN. I need to reduce my cost. I need to um, upgrade my automation things. I need to improve my visibility about the net network, which is not possible in my MPLS kind of a thing. The time is very high time required to configure it. Still, I need that. Even in the case when my all the server is in there, the one or my headquarters side in the data center. Okay. So these are the reason of shifting toward the SD-WAN. It's not just because of the SD-WAN, or I mean, means the cloud, because we want to force it on that. No, no. These are the reason of it. So once you will compare these reasons, you will understand that, okay, the sd is basically a better way to have a WAN connectivity, which providing you the visibility, automation, uh, less time to configure these devices, speed, quality of service and security. So why not I should shift on the sd -WAN? Why should I still be there on the MPLS, which is very costly and time taking a uh, WAN selection and complicated also. A lot of things you need to configure to make a one branch as an app manually which is not there in the case of SD-1. So 110% doesn't matter what kind of a data you have. If you want to have a connectivity with your branches to the head office, still you require the sd -Ware. No matter even if you don't have anything on the cloud. Some clients we have, they don't have this kind of a thing on the cloud, but still they are using sd WAN as well as MPLS. Right? Any more question? All right. That's good. Let's go back to the next thing. So yeah, what kind of a security we are get, getting here? The security we are getting by default, it is there. I don't need to configure any IPsec tunnel or I don't need to configure any um, uh, VPN kind of a thing. It's not required. It is all there by default in built in my Cisco and devices, SD WAN device. I don't need that kind of a thing. Second thing, zero touch security model means the day you will configure without doing any changes. <clears throat> without doing any changes, we can uh, configure my devices. I need to just install it and I can manage it from the controller and I can configure it. So that kind of a thing, which is not possible in the case of our normal MPLS router or the simple router. Strong encryption, which is by default. Encryption technique is the main to secure your data because uh, how much your data you are securing with the help of encryption, it depends on the key, right? The longer the key size, the more difficult for the hacker to decrypt your data. So here, this strong encryption technique is used to secure your more data to your data, which is nearly impossible. We cannot say the impossible, but nearly impossible to decrypt it. Network segmentation, which is very, very important from the point of your security. What means we are never going to allow any branches or any user to have a full access of the all network. Whatever the big or the small network is there, we are obviously going to segment it in many small networks. Basically, network segmentation is to have a proper authority for a one particular network sub network or a sub domain anyone is not going to get, have a full kind of access that if anyone get that access they may harm you badly so that network segmentation is possible with the help of automation very easily which is very difficult in the case of uh, uh, the old way style of configuring the things i need to configure my access list manually i need to apply on my all the devices manually i need to configure the username manually i configure the previous things like see if i go and show you something like this. Suppose this is a one router. There are three type of users. 
we have a three type of user those who are the help desk employee those who are the uh, management kind of uh, engineers and those who are the admin kind of uh, things how can i provide them a uh, three different roles and three different access to the router obviously the default thing you know that in any device or any router we have a just i can either give it a full access or i can give a user access it means just to show and check all the things uh, we don't have any kind of a provision by default through the cli to configure that what user admin can do what user uh, cisco 1 can do what user cisco 2 can do if i want to make a provision that what they can do i need to manually configure which is very difficult to configure not difficult which is very time taking kind of a thing you need to configure first privilege for that cisco 1 cisco 2 and admin and then assign the command that they are allowed to do in that privilege like a privilege 4 privilege 5 so that's something which is very tedious job and it is not possible if suppose your company having a 500 routers so that is very easy in the case of our automation i can just configure one template and i, I can fire that command to my all devices and the user based on the group based on the privilege level they can get the access of that much only in that network so which is very uh, means very interesting feature we have only in the case of our software defined networking for the next generation firewall not in that our old way of cli way then we have a uh, application firewall obviously when we have the visibility we can properly have the protection against any security risk like the, from the malware, from any kind of uh, malicious content, we can all monitor it with the help of our SD1 controller. We can use the different features which is available in that to have the proper control over the traffic. Which kind of application is this? We can even monitor at the application level. Which kind of application is flowing and what required, which is creating a congestion. I need to create a maybe bandwidth for that. I need to create a quality of service for that. It's all possible because of my full visibility. In the case of software defined network it's not only just for the man sd man it is for all which is based on the controller based devices all right so here now in our connectivity between my these devices if i talk about that see that how visible means all the detail level at the very minute level you can monitor the data the application the protocol the packet the file what is going on in your whole network which is possible to manage now earlier in the case of mpls totally black we are totally blank what is happening inside the isp right we can only complain that hey my, we are observing the packet loss we are observing the slow speed right we can only claim that kind of a thing or we can use a third party tool to monitor that uh, real time bandwidth and all that which is not required nowadays the full visibility about your whole network and the whole data is available with the help of your sd band devices that visibility make it a very popular and very uh, good things which is required in today's uh, new generation is required at all to monitor and manage each and everything not just the devices devices is the one thing you can manage and monitor your traffic, quality of service, your security, any malicious content on that. All things is, is possible with the help of your disk controllers. By default, if I say that uh, my VG, VHS devices are there, so how we can manage it and how we can configure it? We need to, uh, the, there is a word which is called as a zero touch deployment. Zero touch deployment means I can just install it and if there is a connection between the control and my VHS, they can always communicate with each other. Always communicate with that on that. What is the way how they can communicate? By default, there are two VPNs which is configured on your SD1 devices. That is your VPN 0 and VPN 512. Now, student even confuse the word with the VPN. So it is a kind of a VPN. Basically, this VPN is in the case of SD-WAN is your VRF. Like we were working in our MPLS technology, right? The same way the VRF is there. VPN zero means it is a one VRF. And what it is, it is going to deal. It's going to deal for the control traffic. All the control traffic will go on this. On my VPN zero by default. And all my interfaces, except my management interface, 
all my interface of the VS device will be in this VPN zero VRF. So don't confuse that VPN is means I'm making an IP V sec and all that. No, VPN is basically a VRF word in the case of SD WAN device. Don't confuse it with any other things. And all the interfaces of your router will be in this VPN zero VRF, which is basically responsible for your control traffic from the controller to my VHS devices. Right. Same way. Second VPN, which is by default, will be configured the VPN zero and VPN 512. VPN 512 is used for the management. And it is basically the out of band out of band management of your devices. For that, we have the VPN 512, which is by default configured and enable on your all the Cisco VHS devices. Okay, so these two VPN is inbuilt in your VHS devices by which you can configure. So only one thing is required, the IP address in VRFU. Once it is configured, you can um, uh, in, uh, deploy that device and that's it. And you can all the things configure from the central one point from your device. So there are some basic, let, let me check if I can uh, turn on. There was a, some problem with my device. So all that off. So here we have a setup about all that. You can see that this is my controller. As you can see that we have a V manage, V bond and V smart. And that's going to control or then manage my these different sites, the VHS devices. The, the underlay network, it can be anything, MPLS, internet or the 4G or 5G, doesn't matter. These are all are my VHS devices that will be controlled with the help of my controller. By the vManage, vBond and vSmart. So now I cannot show you because it is something creating a problem. Well, maybe in a tomorrow class, we'll be able to see in depth of that also. But yeah, my style will be always only this way to make the things in a very simple way. Instead of creating this VPN zero, it is very much required to know first, what is that VPN zero? What is VPN 512 in all my VHS devices? So it's just a simply VRF, like we configure in the case of our MPLS, which VPN zero is a default configuration, which is going to have your control traffic. And VPN 512 is for your out of band management technology. Management technique, how to manage that. And by default, on your uh, VPN 0, which is going to manage your control traffic, only uh, your um, secure traffic is allowed. Your DTLS, IPsec, only that secure traffic is allowed. If you want to set up your lab and you want to practice, you can allow all the traffic on that. But by default, only these three types of traffic is allowed on your that interface, which is not there. Okay, so a lot more things we'll see how to configure it. DTLS, TLS, yeah, DTLS, IP second, TLS. These are the only three type of, of traffic which is allowed by the VPN zero. It's not any interface and all. It is just a VRF. On that VRF, you can assign what you can assign. You can assign your interfaces. Right. And by default, as I told you, all the interface is assigned to my VPN zero. Then you can go under that interface and you can configure the IP address the same way that we configure in our routers. You can configure the IP address. You can configure, make it as a no shutdown because it is in a shutdown condition also. That's it. Only one or two command required from the CLI to be configured on your VHS devices. And the most important thing is the certificate. Each and every device, each and every device has to be uh, authenticated by the certificate. Only then they are going to be able to connect with that controller. Otherwise, anyone on the internet, they have the SD1, they will try to connect with you. And then how you will verify whether it is an authentic one or the wrong person. So that is why the certificate is used and the concept is used for the certificate is your CS certificate. Means one will be this uh, certify, uh, certificate authority, which is going to authenticate whether the, cer uh, the certificate from the client as well as from the controller is correct. They are the real one person, right? 
because anyone can get your certificate and claim that I am the real one, I am the controller, and maybe by mistake you can connect with that. So that is very dangerous on the internet. That is why if you don't have the certificate on your controller as well as on your BHS devices, a proper valid certificate, you will never be able to connect with that. Your SD WAN will be totally down. Nothing you can do without th without that. So at the starting of the class, we'll also go for that, that how to uh, configure these certificates, why it is required, because without certificate, this is the first step authentication. Because the problem is on internet, anyone can claim that I am the controller. This is my certificate. I am the valid, maybe the company XYZ and your edge router may believe that. And that's created a problem. That is why we have a CA certificate kind of uh, arrangement in our sd WAN scenario where all the devices will have a certificate and they will be verified by the third party, a CA certified, certifying authority. Like in the case of our web server, if I'm going to connect with any server, any web server like a reddit.com, How my browser will know whether it is an authentic one or the wrong one? Only because of the certificate. The moment I will type it, the rediff.com is going to give me the certificate. Correct? And that certificate, digital signature, I will send it to where? To the CA, certifying authority. It depends on. Maybe the DZ cert, maybe some other companies are there. I will send it to there. My client, my browser is going to send it. And to check the authenticity whether this certificate belongs to rediff.com or not if it is so then only i will connect to that rediff.com same way here in the case of sd -Bank. certificate is must it is required mandatory without that no kind of a communication possible between the controller and your s devices right so that's a very interesting fact we are going to see uh, not today in the next class we'll also have uh, some hands-on if it is possible to configure these devices, we'll see that. All right, we are going to stop here. If you guys have any doubt about this, it's just a one technology is not something like course or anything else. My style will be only this way to have to have a proper uh, interaction and realization with the help of uh, production network point of view. Not something like well, I'm just teaching you guys. You will never be able to correlate it with the production network. So if you are not able to correlate with your production network, so it's useless to learn any technology or any training. So that is my way. I will only try to correlate the things with the real scenario that how the whole world is working on that. So that will, when you will feel comfortable about that, only then I will go and deep dive on that, how it works. The problem with many of the coaching institute, they go and start explaining these things, this. OMP protocol, what is that? We manage, we smart. It's, it's, it's a thing. So you will work and you would obviously know about that. But the thing is, uh, overall, a good picture, good image should be created in your mind first. Basically, what I'm going to do, what basically is in a broader sense, the SD WAN, right? Once it is clear, working with that or learning that in a deep is not going to make a big deal for you guys. So my backend team is there. If you guys want to ask anything more, you can ask them. They will 100% guide you. All the lab and everything is um, available with us, which will be provided to you guys to remotely access it. And uh, you can connect with my backend teams now. Any doubt, anything that you want to ask about the lab, the timing, the price, and all that will be discussed by our backend team. Any questions that you guys uh, want? Abhishek, uh, this is Bhupati. I'm um, from Chennai. So actually, my question is like, uh, act currently I am working in one of the you know, uh, US based uh, project. So that uh, in that project we are having using uh, ACA, Cisco ACI. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, my question is like, is this similar kind of uh, technology or uh, like uh, ORCID algorithm that we used for both uh, ACA and along with uh, SDM, or how it will be like? Let me see, tell you, see that ACI you are using for what devices for a particular one kind of a device, like for your data center kind of a devices. And what you are getting from the ACI, you are doing automated thing, right? You are doing automation kind of a thing. Same way here in the case of SD WAN, we are going to use a different other protocols like the REST APIs, NetConf, right? 
that is going to make the things automated. Instead of CLI, we are going to use that things. It's a similar, but not the same technology, right? It's a similar to that, whatever you are doing with the help of ACI, we are going to do here in the case of SD-WAN, the automation. Only thing we are doing the automation. So that anyone, those who are not aware about the command, they can have the GUI access and they can manage the devices, right? So it's similar, but not the same. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Anyone else? Those who want to know anything about it. All right. If uh, no more questions. I, yeah. Uh, this is Ashish here. So I just want to know the lab will cover anything cloud scenarios like uh, if a company a customer has a. Uh, Hybrid architecture, Azure, Amazon, and on-prem. So, how the SD One fabric will be built between the on-prem and cloud? Obviously, you will see the cloud is not a device. One thing is clear. Yeah, cloud is correct. what? Cloud is a service where you are going to have install your servers and all that. So, basically, when you are talking that how to cover that, so obviously you are making a connection with that. With a particular server and all that. So how it will be dealt with the SD WAN? Obviously, it will be there. So if you are able to connect with any branch to branch or from any branch to the cloud, so cloud is not a kind of a device with, uh, which with which you are going to make a connection. Cloud on the cloud, you are having a services. You are taking a services like maybe a server or the infrastructure and all that. Obviously, this SD WAN is providing a connectivity with that, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to install the cloud here on my lab and I will show you. I will simulate it, but not the real cloud where my devices are installed. Okay, okay. you will be simulating. Right? So you, there will be a similar uh, v edge or some device can be installed yeah. on the cloud platform. Yeah. Okay. Anywhere, see, v edges devices, you can connect with anyone. If you have the connectivity with your controller, you have different interfaces. Never think that the, your edge, v edges is only, only going to connect with the controller there are many other interface the downside they are going to connect with the internal network and there are some other interface that you can configure toward the 4g which is going toward the cloud and it's okay the cloud is something which is where you have a device cloud itself is not a device cloud is just a feature just a facility which is provided to us if we don't want to install our servers here on our company or in our uh, data center we are shifting that to the cloud so cloud is not anything which is a device which you are going to connect with your cloud to the VHS. VHS is going to make a connection whatever it is there on the cloud. Whatever is there on the cloud, like your server is there, you can communicate with the VHS. Why not? And that is the only reason why we are using the uh, SD WAN because a lot of the services are not there in my head office. I'm shifting that all over on the cloud. So VHS are going to make a connection with that, with the cloud. So cloud will be there is no limitation the or sorry uh, there is no limitation of compatibility with any public cloud because these ads can be set in anywhere hmm? what i mean to ask like there is no limitation or compatibility for the public clouds to, to install the v ads uh, components hmm? see it depends yeah it it depends on that the the the, the company which is providing you the cloud services that depends on that which kind of a VHS devices you can install and which is going to be sub supported on that. It depends on that. But yeah, these, the, see, whatever the technology you are using, the underlay, it doesn't matter for the SD WAN. It can be anything on the internet, on the MPLS, 4G, cloud, doesn't matter. It's not going to create any problem for that. Okay, understood. Yeah. yeah. It is providing these things. Important thing is to understand from the MPLS point of view, which is, this is the provided by the SD WAN. It doesn't matter if you want to connect on the cloud, on the internet, on your private network, anywhere you can connect with this. So it's not going to create any problem. Okay. So interesting part, whenever you are going to take any coaching from anywhere, the only important thing for you guys to see that whether they are able to correlate it with the real scenario or not. If they are not able to correlate with your real scenario where, where your actual problems, it's useless, right? Because that you can also learn it from the any video courses, from any online courses. So that is the most important thing, not for this only one particular course I'm telling you. For any course in future, if you are going to take from anywhere, 
see that whether they are able to correlate with the with the real scenario or not or it is just a book is knowledge just to learning these and reading these words and trying to explain that word it's not going to work in the real scenario you know very much right those who are working professionally they know that whatever we are there in the books is not going to be totally applicable on my real scenario it is very much as a mentor or a instructor the job is to make a bridge between the book or the concept and to the real scenario only then it's going to make that coaching or the, that training is going to make a sense for a, anyone so we'll have something like that if you guys have any question you can ask or you can unmute otherwise we are going to wrap up we'll see you tomorrow also those who want to join they can join we'll be discuss the similar things if the lab possible we'll see the lab also <clears throat> all right thank you everyone for listening and giving me such a wonderful opportunity to interact with you guys if you have any feedback you can give it to my back end teams and for any inquiry they will definitely connect with you guys or you can connect with them on the given links and have a proper information about this course all right till then bye good day